Artnet Live Volume Two broadcast. Art as a reminder. Artnet Live as a reminder. As a reminder, Artnet provides a social platform on our Discord server to make friends and collaborate on music production. My name is Jen, and you know me as Grimes Meme Queen on my platform. Today's broadcast will feature the talents of five producers in our community, including Ceremonies, World Prince, Candented, Lore, and Tether. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the staff members of Artnet Live who continue to make this project possible, and they are as follows. Ritesh, Olivia, Eve, Erica, Navar, and Maria. Additionally, I want to thank our folks over on tech support who have kept us running over the past few months. Satalo, who is currently running our stream, Harrison, Nuria, and Bruno. Stick around after today's show as I'll be conducting an interview with some of the artists using questions that you guys submitted in our server. I'd also like to mention that we will continue to host streams via Twitch. So go ahead and follow us on Twitch to join us for artist interviews, music, music genre discussions, music festival history, Y2K fashion, and much more. Without further ado, let's kick things off.
Flower starts to dance around the boys. She begins to move her hips.
Eyes on the bra, paint a picture like it raw Got a secret, got a key, spoke some flowers with a face And a fire with the heat, strip your name to green and cheat Many things on my eyes, got a heart and a sunrise
Hey guys. So first off, that was incredible. Absolutely fantastic. Volume one was amazing. And volume two somehow turned out even better, I think, because of our Twitch stream. Guys, I am sitting here with every single one of our artists this time uh, to do an interview and ask them a little bit about their process. I got some questions that I'm going to ask uh, from the server that you guys submitted to us over on our Artnet Discord. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. We're really glad you're joining us via Twitch right now. So first things first, I want to hear about your artist name, what country you live in, and what music genre you would classify yourself as. I'm going to start with Ceremonies. Ceremonies. Hello. Um, my artist name is Ceremonies, but my real name is Hannah. Um, I live in the U.S., and I guess I would classify my music as just electronic, experimental, like trap and house music. I try a lot of different stuff. Yeah. 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 World Prince, you're up next. Hello, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, um, I'm World Prince, but my real name is Shai, but it's like not my real name. It's just a nickname. Um, I'm from the UK, and I'd say I make like a bedroom feeling. I don't know. <laughs> just like, yeah, um, sorry. I don't know what to say. <laughs> that works for us. Can Dente talk to us. <laughs> indented my friend you're still on mute i love this part it's like the interview seance excellent there we go so candented is actually a word that means uh light from heat so being warmly lit and what country you live in in your music genre let's forget um in the united states and my genre is all over the place so. we love that eclectic <laughs> Okay, Lore, your turn. Um, my name is Lore. Uh, my real name is Jules. Uh, Lore, is, Lore is my virtual music, like musician project that's in the works. Um, and the name was really random at first because I was trying to perform under like my given name. But as I grew as a, mu a musician, I started to designate like where I begin and lore starts and mm -hmm. um, developing the story like around my character has to do with the name so like the lore of lore yeah I love that oh, I'm from the U.S. too <laughs> it's keeping the two separate between your personal life and your artist life love that okay and last tether hi can you guys hear me yep um, I'm Tether. I'm also based in the U.S. and I make like pop music. It's very club inspired, lots of techno, lots of house. Yeah. Nice. All right, guys. How did you first become interested in producing? I'm going to throw it back to ceremonies for this one. How'd you first start out? Um, I actually first started out from taking a music course in a high school, like a music production course. Um, it was a lot of like live audio um, and like recording, fundamental stuff like that. Um, and then I kind of like just put it off for a little bit and I never really was interested because I was a big band kid and I was studying for um, becoming a band teacher actually. So I just like completely strayed from music production. And then after I decided to stop going to school for music education, I got back into production and I kind of just fell back into it. And here I am now. <laughs> Fantastic. Were you also the type of kid that was at band camp every summer? Every summer, I actually did um, Drum Corps International as well. So I went on tour across the country doing marching band. I was a very big band geek. <laughs> okay, we love it. All right, World Prince, tell me about how you first became interested in producing. Um, I'd say when I was like 15, when I was still at school, I would just like make the worst songs to like free YouTube beats. That was like my thing for like a year and then I got like way too picky with them and I was like I'm gonna just have to like try make it myself I guess because it's like uh I don't know using free beats is like great but like I just I'm way too picky so I just started doing everything myself which is hard but it's worth it I guess <laughs> you know, that creativity coming out I gotta say shy your grimes covers <laughs> not even oh uh, they I was very embarrassed about them. 
Why? So no, they were so I, good. It's like, I don't know. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> loved it. Seriously. That brings me to Tether. How'd you first become interested in producing? I started in the first lockdown in the US. I just kind of finally had time and had the opportunity and I'd like written songs and done some work with producers, but I just never wanted to show them my stuff because I was just like sensitive about it and picky. And so then I learned how to produce. And I was like, okay, well, this makes more sense than writing or singing ever did. Yeah, I think something about, you know, even signing up to do something like Artnet shows, there's so much vulnerability there for you guys. And I hope it paid off today to see in the chat how much people love your stuff. Let's go to question three. So in volume one, we asked our producers, what defines talent? Like what's a talented producer to you? So I wanted to play off that. So what would you say is the most important skill for a producer to have became the next easiest question after that? So Tether, what would you say is the most important skill for a producer? Uh, it's definitely resilience for me. I mean, you have to make so much bad stuff over and over and over to really get to a good point. So you have to be resilient and not get down on yourself and just keep going and keep just making stuff. That's kind of like the motto. Yeah. Just keep putting it out there. All right. Candented. What would you say is the most important skill for producers? Uh, I would say that it's, I would, I would agree with, with Laura, or I'm sorry. I would agree with the previous person. It's definitely um, resilience. I, I make a song a day and I never release the majority of them. So it's definitely just putting it out there and working at it every day. I'm always so impressed by this when you guys say that you're like putting out stuff every day because I don't make music. And so when I hear you guys say that, like, hey, the creativity is flowing out of you every single day in this fashion, it's always like fascinating to me. Okay, this next one, I actually was just having a conversation with Shy prior to our broadcast about this question. It was about um, when to stop on a track and say, you know what, it's done, it's ready to master. Um, and I actually don't have Shy tagged uh, to answer this one, uh, but Candented, I'm going to throw it back to you. Tell me about how you know it's time to stop and you're good to go. I don't really. I... Uh, I keep going and then sometimes I'll go back to a previous version of a track that I've made because I, I don't like where I've gone with the track. So I create versions of different tracks and I'll go back to a version like I'll save and before I make a change, then I'll go back to that version if I liked it better than what I had, what I had gone down. Fantastic. Um, this next person that I want to throw this one to is Lore. Laura, tell me about your process for knowing like, hey, I'm done with this. Well, a lot of the work that I uh, presented on volume two today uh, is all demos um, because I get insanely attached to a lot of my work, but I want to continue to um, improve on them. And uh, I, have, I have files going back years that like I still love and I think they need more work and they they could be something really great but maybe their time is not now and um, I personally don't like to hold out on songs because um, I think you know people want to hear them I want to hear them and I want to see them grow uh, so I think as a musician going forward I'm going to like not hold on to things as much anymore because it doesn't really help if I have a lot of things that I'm proud of that just sit in a folder somewhere on my computer and never get to see the light of day. So Laura that being said what do you plan to do with all of that that's still on your computer waiting to be seen? Heard sorry. Yeah I have some projects in the works at the moment. Um, and a lot of the demos that I compiled for volume two will be um, little bits of this, uh, what I hope to be an album coming out eventually. <laughs> I have a lot of projects in my mind that I wanna organize and I can see um, myself compiling a uh, an instrumental like EP an experience maybe like an hour of uh, like a journey through some of the sounds that I have 
fashioned because I think a lot of my music is interpretations of visual scenarios because I'm a very visual person um, and concepts in my brain that I don't always know how to put into words, but they sound and look to me like something I indescribable. And I could see myself putting that together into like a volume and releasing that. I hear from so many of you guys when I talk to producers within Artnet's Discord server that music for you guys is a way to express yourself emotionally when verbally isn't your favorite way to do it. And so musically, it just comes out of you and pours out of you. I know that Aaron Heard talked a lot about this on our volume one interview. So I love to hear about that. This next one, I feel, is a really poignant question. It's what do you do when you're out of creativity? By isolating yourself, taking a break, or something completely different. Uh, ceremonies, back to you for this one. Um, I honestly just like to work on, like, still, I like to work on music still, but not, like, writing music. So I like to, like, open up my commissions and, like, mix songs, remix songs, um, maybe do a DJ set. Um, and that way I can, like, look through music and find new music. Um yeah, I honestly just, I listen to a lot of music when I'm uninspired and yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So ceremonies, I am hoping you'll be back on one of our streams in the near future for us for some DJing, hopefully. So I would love to do that. We would love to hear it. Okay. Uh, Lore, same question for you. What do you do when you feel like, Hey, I'm out of creativity. I'm tapped out. I think I consume a lot of media particularly like visual stuff, um, movies, shows, music videos, um, photos. I, because I do draw a lot of inspiration from like visual forms of art and media. And I, I think I turn to a lot of my other creative outlets um, and try and learn new things, um, whether it be like digital art, modeling stuff, um, which helps me <laughs> helps me develop my uh, my music project as well, and I also open myself up for collaboration and um, help you know diversify my sound by challenging myself with some other creators and different subgenres of you know the same overall electronic genre because it's really it's really interesting the kind of stuff that we put out that's so different but we all come together within it and that does really like really really inspire my creativity and gets that going yeah it's like expanding that neuroplasticity we love it okay um this is from georgia bliss georgia bliss was one of our volume one producers you should definitely look up all of them on spotify because volume one producers are all over my uh my Spotify right now in my like liked section. So Georgia asks, what is your creative process when it comes to making music? Where do you like to start? I'm going to start with Candented on this one. Candented, are you with us? Can you repeat the question you broke up? Yeah, sure. Uh, what is your creative process like when it comes to making music? Where do you like to start? It depends. Sometimes I feel a mood, then based off the mood, I choose which of my mini projects I think would fit that mood. I have different projects for my different moods. I have about 16 SoundCloud profiles for different projects, like different sounds that I'm doing. Um, I'll sit with a synth and I'll just build from that. Um, that fits my mood. And I start experimenting with different melodies and it just kind of takes off there with layering, you know, building from the, from the ground up. Um, I started on the guitar, so sometimes I'll start off on a guitar and write on that and then convert it over or transpose it over to the, uh, I guess, to the production side or the digital side. Uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's kind of where I start with creating music. So, Kim Dented, based on that answer of the music that we heard today, what moods were most reflected in the set from today? Yeah, so early on in the set, it was... It was more of a, I guess, I guess you could say it was more of an emotional um, approach, kind of dark. And then as you got to the end of the set, it became more of a, more of a rave, more of a party, uh, more of a good time. So Which just, we felt. Thank you. It was awesome. 
Okay, World Prince, same question. What is your creative process when it comes to making music? I actually, before you talk, World Prince, I want to tell the cute story that we were talking about before this. So guys, uh, World Prince had followed me on my Instagram page for a while and had DM'd me, what, shy, like five months ago, something like that? Yeah, I would say, I would say around five, six months. I had posted yeah. something about Artnet. And so you were like, oh, wow, that's really right. cool. I should, I should submit <laughs> something. And I was like, oh, that would be awesome. Like, I hope you do it, not knowing if you would feel yeah. vulnerable enough to do it. And I was so excited when you got involved and you submitted a, a set. So um, with that being said, yeah, uh, what's your creative process like for the stuff that you shared today? I'd say I always, whatever I make is based on what I'm obsessed on of like being obsessed with like two three songs and then i'm like i snag something from it like the drums even just like the key of the song i might just like use that and then i just always have like references i guess but yeah like i i sometimes i do have like sparks of like you know creativity but usually it comes from something else more than anything i guess that's my great about it <laughs> This is a follow-up deeper question, Shy, that you didn't expect, but what oh, types shit. of okay. oh, li- sorry. <laughs> what no, types sorry. of li- it's okay. I don't think we have children listening, so we're good. <laughs> okay. Um, so Shy, what types of life experiences do you find have most uh, affected your creative process with writing or producing? Men. <laughs> Honestly, like definitely. Like I recommend anyone just everyone put that energy into it it just like everything's like so it's like i don't know it's kind of like a fuck you to them i guess relatable so relatable yeah not always sometimes i'm like you know i just make songs about like like the opening track is just like purely just fun (laughs) yeah and i could tell um I loved it when you're, when your set first hit and it was such a jam. So, uh, yeah, you heard it from shy. You guys been sometimes you're the worst. Okay. Uh, what do you do for fun outside of working on music? We'll start with tether when you're when not, not sitting like, there making oh, music. Oh my God. So good. Thank you so talking to me. <laughs> shy. It's totally cool. Tether. What do you like to do for fun outside of working on music? Um, I mean, I spend a lot of time working on music, so not that much, but I've been really into doing visuals. So getting more experience with video editing and just like being creative on that end. Idea of you know uh, personifying these evils and um, I I like to uh, characterize maybe like mother nature or the earth in general as like almost a super villain in this sense because um, we we will look at her that this way when when the climate starts to change and things are becoming more difficult when it's really a human issue and a human problem um but for fun (laughs) to get back to that um I think uh I guess I don't really have a lot of time I'm a I work a lot I'm a student so music has to like fit into that area of my life that is left for fun and excitement so Several things about what you said. One, I love that it feels so Grimes-ish with the misanthropocene because I feel like what Grimes did with misanthropocene is make something like climate change palatable so that the conversation was open versus making it something divisive and political that nobody wants to have a discussion about because the music is interjected into it. So I love that. Secondly, I love your hippie. I think all of us need more of that. Like, go put your feet on some grass. <laughs> I had to remind myself of that yeah. yesterday. I need to log out and put my feet on some grass. So thanks, Laura. 
Okay. I always like to end any interview I do with what advice do you give? So there's people listening to this right now. They're like, Ooh, I really want to uh, sign up to maybe be involved in volume three, or they just want to make music for the heck of it to express themselves emotionally. What's your advice for aspiring producers ceremonies? I'm so glad you're back with us. We'll start with you. Um, honestly, it's hard to like give advice for that because I feel like I still am an aspiring producer. But um, I guess mostly what I would say and what I've learned the most from school is just um, like being organized and maybe making a plan. Like if you feel lost with um, like getting songs finished or just the overall form of writing a song, um, just to like plan it out, like maybe um, do like a chord progression one week, like work on your chord progression for one week and then the next week work on the beat or like vice versa and then have a timeline for when you want the song out just like to give yourself goals because then when you finish those goals and accomplish them you feel a lot better and you feel motivated so yeah Yeah. breaking those big goals down into smaller goals yeah okay world prince what's your advice for other people that want to be like you um i mean i think i'd say there's always something to learn like no matter what level you're at there's always something to progress with you know just like have fun with it don't take it too serious and like don't listen to like those people on the internet that are like oh your eq should be like this like no go listen to them just like tweak tweak it how you like it don't listen to the internet (laughs) i guess Yeah, yeah do it your way exactly like as long as you like it like what else matters I mean, yeah, it's good for other people to like it, but what's the point if you don't like it? It's- yeah, be authentic. I think people pick up when you're inauthentic in your art form. Right. All right, Candented, what's your advice for aspiring producers that want to be like you? Let me go back to what I said earlier. Just don't give up and persist through the weak songs. Like everyone has weak songs, so don't base your judgment of yourself on the highlight reel of someone else. They shared it on social media. They're, they're going to, it's the highlight reel. It's the best that they have. Um, there's, for me, it's 10 tracks of absolute shit before I find what I'm looking for. Um, so don't create for an audience, I guess, too. like create because it helps you get through your shit as well. Um, and then if you're in a bad mood, create, if you're in a good mood, create lost your job, create, I mean, your life can be your strongest motivation and inspiration. If you, if you let it, I think that's a fantastic, um, point to end on what Ken Denton just said keep creating because as humans that's what we do to express ourselves is to create so I love that you guys felt vulnerable enough to share your talents with us today and it absolutely paid off we had a blast guys if you want to keep hearing more from um, volume two producers we tend to keep up with our producers in the channel um, we plan to keep twitch streaming hopefully bring in some of these guys from time to time for more interviews dj sets um, drop in singles I've already talked to shy about some of that stuff too um, thank you guys so much for joining us today for volume two it was awesome. We appreciate seeing your faces and thank you artists for sharing your talents with us. Bye guys.